Let's basically set the celestial vector to the basically the minimum vector. So the bottom left. So if the sun is and moon are not up, then it gets set to something. So let's see, we have this, like, this moon set stuff and this rise, rise sun stuff. But let's see. We have the sunrise basically going from the night skylight and moonlight and night sky light colors from night sky color to sky color and all that. And down here, what are we going for? Let's see, this will be percent down here. So why don't we just go ahead and set our percent inside of here so we don't have to we can kind of clean up some of this code a little bit. So let's get the percent. So our subsurface weight's gonna go to zero. This is what start and end start at one, end at start at zero, end at one. Okay, so we've got all that. So the stars are going to go out, is what this is doing. And then we're going from, we're setting our day weight, which is going to change our background color from day to night. So let's see, what have we got going on up here? Our night sky color, our actual sky color is what we're setting. So what, do we even use day weight anymore inside of our material? Yeah, it's sky color and night sky color. Actual sky color. All right, so let's see. Star texture, sky cube, star brightness, sky color, night sky color.
Okay, so we can we can change our actual sky color if we want inside of our time of day if we'd like. And we're going to set our actual sky color to the night sky color. Let's see what that does. So stars will go out. We've got this yellow light that comes up, and that's kind of our sunrise. Aren't we seeing any shadows? Well, we are seeing some shadows. Just not too many of them. So let's see. One of the things that I'm a bit concerned about is the lack of shadows on. I mean, we got some shadows on these objects. That is true, they're there. It's hard to see them, but they do exist. I think that looks fine. Alright, let's see what happens 
if we do like a sunrise facing the other way like if we take our skybox here and we rotate it by 180 degrees It just doesn't work. It's kind of like, when did we lose all of our shadows? So why don't we try it here? Why don't we get our, our skybox? Let's change the time of day to like 8 in the morning. Make it so there's no time of day advance. So where the hell are our shadows? Why don't we have any shadows off of Bitey? Interesting, so the skylight is providing all the light to the sea. And the celestial light. It's not lighting this. Doesn't seem like it's. I mean, that light should be coming in. Is it all in shadow? It's just not very intense. Why not? Intensity is five. So let's see, a celestial light doesn't seem like it's at the right angle, does it? Like, I would totally expect that to light something right here.
All right, well, let's take a look. This is during daytime. So rotating our vector based on our on all of our stuff. So let's see, we have the lights here and we see the vectors. So let's see, we've got a god light, celestial light. Alright, I guess those are all kind of bunk. I mean, it says it's movable, but why don't we see a direction vector off of this thing? If we saw a direction vector off of the other lights. Well, I guess let's just manually move this thing over here. So our celestial light is at 180. Gosh, I wish I could copy. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, it looks like the vector is not correct. I mean, is it? Yeah, I guess it is. Hmm. And the reason it's looking odd is because the whole world is at like this 5, 10 degree angle so that we can actually like look down and all that stuff. All right. So I guess what we'd have to do is do something like that in order to actually get what I'd want. So for so for our actual direction, we're gonna need more more of this phase height added into our Celestial vector for our align light call. So, like, re set relative rotation on the celestial light is going to have to. It's like we're flipping around in the in the Y. I guess we need to add a few more in the other direction. So let's see what you can do here.
All right, so why don't we just make a new variable here, which is going to be this, like, light, uh, what is this, yaw offset? Throw a float on there. See what we can do with this. Okay, here we go. All right, so that's the this sort of stuff. Kind of sweep it around if we need to. So we need a light pitch offset. It looks like we do need like a maybe a 10 degree offset. What if it was only 5? Yeah, even a 5 degree change makes this thing work a lot better. That looks fine. Let's put the day advance back on and see how it looks. Well, our shadows are all sorts of screwed up now.
So the main issue really is that our, our shadows really aren't here anymore. So what can we do about that? I mean, they are here. They're just very faint. Let's see. During the day, we want. All right, this is starting to starting to look a little bit better. Alright, so we want the sun's skylight intensity maybe to be like 3, and the sunlight intensity to be 6. Yeah, that's, that's seemingly working. And a lot of this stuff now I gotta tune to figure out exactly where it all should be.
Alright, so let's see. If we put our time of day at noon. Well, why don't we have a shadow? So let's figure out the shadows real quick. So in our skybox, we've got our skylight. So if we turn off our skylight, we should be able to see our shadows a lot better. Well, it's basically the celestial light. The intensity is 6. So we should be getting shadows here. So let's see. Translucent shadows, lighting. All right, so light shafts, we have those on. Cascaded shadow maps. How far cascaded shadow map dynamic shadows will cover removal light measured from the camera. So if we turn like our shadow maps way up to 10, then we've got more shadow maps and all of a sudden, you know, we can do stuff again. Which the main thing is we need to use more than the recommended number of shadow maps. And then we can then we can actually see all of our stuff. All right, so let's take our skylight, affect the world, and let's take our celestial light on this thing, and let's set our let's go over our settings here and get them set properly. So. Our cascaded shadow maps. I want this 200,000. We're going to want Let's see. If we've got 9 8 Let's put eight. Why don't we just mess with it a little bit? Seven, six, five, four. All right, so like having six looks like it could work. So default this to six. Distance fade out fraction. So if we run this with our fade out, what changes when we mess with our with our fade out fraction on our light? Not much. All right. So default that to zero then.
So let's see what time of day is it. It is three o'clock. Drop this guy so he's actually on here. And let's see what happens. Alright, so 15. And yeah, there shouldn't be any shadows right there. Because there's no real light. Let's see, if we had more shadow maps, would that do anything right now? Yeah, it would. Alright, where the hell is the sky stuff? Ah, where are you? There you are. I'll change the light pitch offset. Let's make this 2 in the evening. Or 2 in the morning. Let's see that transition again real quick. 
to make sure that that looks correct. It looks pretty good. And the shadows are all there again. Doing what they should. Make a release build real quick and see how everything looks inside of that. Show output log, yeah. Output log is an opening. Now the reason that the package failed is because I think we had Visual Studio open and attached, and that was blowing everything up. Alright, so let's let's take a look at a shipping build, and it's important to look at shipping builds every once in a while just to see if there's any performance problems or anything else. I've been doing a bunch of graphics stuff, so I'm going to take a look at it. See if there's anything that pops up with, you know, those shadow maps and all sorts of other stuff in an actual shipping build. And I've been working for way too damn long at this point. So this should be, shouldn't take too long to make a shipping build since it's a incremental build and we built it last time. It should just have to compile our code, not the entire engine and all that. So we should be pretty good here. And we will just have to be patient. Let's see, we're building the assets. Alright, so we're going to build all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Couple config. 
And we're going to read some things. Now we're cooking all the data. It's kind of how the build system works is you cook all the assets. Once the assets are all cooked, then you can you know, package them all up, shove them all into you know, levels and all that stuff so that the shipping build can all read it in. So cooking should be finished there. Now it's collecting the files so it can create the pack files. All right, so copying all those to the staging directory. All right, so we should be able to run our cooked build. So that should be in project dashkin dashkin saved or test build Windows no editor. And this guy seven six yeah this is it. Let's see what it looks like. And it looks exactly like what we'd expect. Just a bunch of biteys just looking around doing doing a whole bunch of nothing. All right, so I think we're good to go. That's looking like what it should look like. And we're not suffering from any performance problems in there. All right, so I think I'm pretty much done for today as to what I've been working on here. And what we're going to need to work on, or I'm going to need to work on next time, is the actual, like, the, the rays off of here for kind of the... Like we got some test levels like this. These visual tests. Let's actually grab a grab a thumbnail. So this like sunset over waterfall thing. We're gonna want to do a lot more with the bloom on some of these things to get some of these sorts of effects going on our on all our stuff. And while this is kind of kind of a crappy stuttery frame rate right here, 
in the editor, it works just fine in release in a shipping build. And that has a lot to do with Has a lot to do with the reflections, not like this is this water reflection capture is super unoptimized uh, if it's not shipping. So I'll work on getting some of these rays, and that was basically we need another directional light, which is only casting bloom, um, bloom rays, and that's how we kind of get this effect without blowing up like um, our reflections on the water and everything else. So we will be working on that. Next tip. Thanks for joining me, and uh, how's it going? I am done <laughs> for now. So, goodbye.